All right, so this one says Charleston White. These are dangerous people. Um, I, I'm, I'm just gonna assume we're talking about some ninjas, bro. I'm, I'm just gonna assume that. That's just what we're gonna go with, like, off rip. Because that's just the type of dude he is, bro. <laughs> so, I'm gonna assume it's about some ninjas or something. And he's saying they're dangerous people. And that's fine. This, I just want everybody to remember, this is like, this is an older interview. It looks like, this is not the full interview. This looks like, uh, maybe like a little section. Probably talking about these niggas. But it's probably edited and shit like that. So, you know, if some things are left out, they left out, you feel me? But we don't watch it anyway. So let's check this one out. I didn't feel like watching like two hours of an interview right now, bro. You feel like, I don't feel like doing that right now. But we don't, we don't go ahead and, uh, maybe my eyes were open more right now. It'd be cool, but I'm tired, bro. But we don't go ahead and... They shooters, but they go paint their fingernails, though. What you feel about their culture right there? Them boys that go get the smiley faces. Uh, uh, boy, them some dangerous niggas. <laughs> boy, a nigga that'll kill you and go paint his motherfucking fingernail. Boy, he a dangerous motherfucking nigga. You better leave him alone. Because, nigga, he don't mind killing you and going down there being a punk. That's the only thing make jail bad. Nigga can't get no pussy. So imagine a nigga who don't mind going down there and getting booted. Yeah. Imagine a nigga who violent, homie. So now, homie, nobody's more gangster than a gay that's playing gangster. Cause nigga, he'll kill you and somebody else and go down Charles there and be in heaven in the punk factory, in the dick factory. I mean. <laughs> and I ain't, yeah, 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 excuse me, TikTok was saying the P-U-N-K, but yeah, nah, homie, so, uh, most of the, most the gangsters, most of the gangsters, homie, got secret homosexual tendency. That's why the nigga said, nigga, I don't give a damn about crashing out. You really want to go get a bunch of booty and be accepted for doing it, because they accept you to be gangster and gay in prison, especially if you're a real gangster. If you're a real gangster, you can go down there and rape niggas. You can go down there and make niggas, yeah, Those homie, if you're statements. a real gangster. Yeah. But if you're a real gay, you can't. See the difference? Yeah. Hey, let me know what y'all think about that, bro. That's, that's real gangsters right there, bro. Going to prison, great, shit like that, bro. Go ahead and let me know in the comments what y'all think about that, bro. What's Charles saying? Is it facts? Is he capping? Is he just yapping? What was he doing, bro? Let me know something. Yeah, so nigga, you, them gangster gays are some dangerous niggas, boy, and I'm scared of I mean, them. I believe that part. Yeah, I'm scared of them. I don't bother them. I call police. I'm nigga quick. That's <laughs> the police. Hey, man. Hell yeah, turn that shit off. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. You been, can't TikTok. Wait, why you it? ask that question? You got yeah. what, what, on TikTok. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. What you got? I just want to get his opinion. You can see it. It's a That's lot it. of these guys out here. I got one for you. I got one for you. When it comes to elevating within your own community, and you said you never took like grants and yeah. things like that, how do you advertise to youth or individuals that are self-employed to generate income without getting that kind of backing? Oh, uh, so, some of us have to. Here's a dime, get ready. Oh, uh, because we don't know how to challenge the community. We don't know how to make the, the community activate to the needs of the community. I use shaming tactics, homie. Man, you bitch-ass nigga done shot up this woman's house. So the, the Hoover niggas, the, the, the Hoover niggas shot up this 93-year-old woman house, homie. And I read about it in the paper. Nigga, me and my youth organization went and, and repaired the bullets at the old woman's house. So I came online to shame them niggas. Uh, shaming tactics work, homie, but it's also risky. So I was given a book. Let me just say this. You got 501c3s. You got 501c4s. Hey, I appreciate C4s, the follow. They, they're for profit that gives money to the non profit. Yeah, I'm telling right? you how to say that. So bro. you, you got right. schools that's for profit. All these bullshit schools that we see on, on after yeah, Judge Matthews, be... those are for profit schools that take all of your financial aid money. So there's a guy by the name of Bart LeBeau. Bart LeBeau used to be the executive director of the Annie Casey Foundation. The Annie Casey Foundation is one of the biggest organizations in, 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 in America, out of Washington, D.C., that gives most of the grant funding to everybody throughout the country. He gave me this book to read that was called The Revolution Will Not Be Funded. See, they tricked us and told us the revolution will not be televised, but it's very much televised. Mm. The revolution will not be funded. So there's a book called The Revolution Will Not Be Funded. And, and in this book, it breaks down what, who, what, when, where, and how nonprofits were created. Nonprofits came about after the civil rights movement. Black people didn't need nonprofits to help black people. Hey, neighbor, can I borrow some sugar? Yeah, neighbor. 
Boy, neighbor across the street, your mama done ran off. Ain't left, ain't left no money. The neighbor across the street used to make sure y'all ate. The neighbor next door used to whoop your ass. So we were self-sustained like that. So in the 60s, after the, the civil rights movement, nonprofits, and they called it nonprofit industrial complex. Why you think so many black people trying to get nonprofits? Nonprofits was created to hinder social movements like the civil rights movement. So if you got a nonprofit, nigga, you're hindered for your social movements. So you're supposed to figure out a way to self-sustain you for your people. Well, what you mean by that, nigga? Sorry, Sorry about that. I had to ban him. I don't do follow for follow, bro. If you, you follow me on Twitch, bro, cool. I appreciate it, bro, but I'm not doing the whole follow for follow thing, bro. I, I ain't doing none of that. That's not what I do. I ain't doing that. But anyway. But we sold barbecue. Remember I told y'all I, I was selling chopped beef and pork? We sold barbecue. I sold fake ecstasy pills. I sold weed. I made drug dealers give me money. I went, I had prostitutes coming to give us money. I went back to the community. Why would I target my community? Because they're the largest consumers on earth. Nobody spend more money than the black people. Y'all ain't got a little bit to give me for these kids, my nigga. Some of these y'all kids and nieces and nephews. So if you ain't gonna help me, find some of your kids' friends who need shoes. Help them. So as a as a black business, uh, you have to create something other than your business for your people. A job training program for the young kids. A, a, a community serving opportunity for the nigga really that's on probation. You have to create something other than your business or they're going to start breaking into your business. So we have to think self-sustainability. Right, nigga, as a business person, nigga, you can get all your back in tax write-offs if you do it right. You ain't got to beg and add white folk for nothing. Because once they give to you, you are now being controlled, and now you're hindered in what you can say. You better not make a fucked up, fucked up social media post. Go take his money back. See how they doing, Kanye? Yeah. See how they doing, Kanye? Yeah. Because he took <laughs> their money dirty. for it, and now he want to stand on his own. And they're making it hard for him to be able to stand on his own because they gave him the money at first. They made him a billionaire. And when he made them mad, they snapped their fingers, and he went under a billion in one day. They froze his bank accounts. That's so crazy that And nigga, I talked to Yate regularly. Oh. But nigga, he isolated as a black man, nigga. Because they're making it hard for him to stand on his own. And they done turned us well, against him. So when you like... talk to like people like Kanye, like what y'all talk about? Uh, spirituality. They froze his bank accounts. Okay, that shit is real, bro. I was making sure that nigga, I was talked to Yate. People like right. Kanye, like what y'all talk about? Uh, I was sweet there, bro. I was like, what the fuck? Or how to be strong for our people. Uh, I, talked to, I talked to P from QC. He put me on the phone with Corey Gamble. Uh, it's a group text of black millionaires and billionaires, homie, to share all my content. Very fun to what I do. Uh, Cam Newton didn't want to pay me, homie. And they made all that money and they gave me $1. So I made him give something to an organization here in Atlanta. Since you won't give me nothing, homie, get something to an organization here in Atlanta. He didn't pay me, but I made sure somebody here got paid. Uh, we got to go back to fubuing, homie, with black businesses. For us, by us, with us, of us, or against us. And to the black business, take that concept, uh, we're compromised. Every day we wake up in America, homie, we compromise, my nigga, because we ain't for us. So if I got to go to, why I got to go to white people to get help, homie? Why all the money we got, my nigga, why I can't come to niggas to get help? Damn. We ain't got no heart for each other, but nigga, our mamas and our grandmothers and our women, they'll go give it to the preacher, and he balling like the ball player. So we got the money to go get, homie. We just got to find a method in a way to extract it from our people. And it has to be innovative. That's so wild to think about, brothers. He's, he's speaking like straight facts, bro. Like, nigga, can I hold a dollar, bro? Like, come on, bro. When's the last time you asked some nigga for a dollar, bro? And he gave it to you. You know what I mean? It's like, you really think about it, bro. It ain't, it ain't too often. And I know that's, like, a funny thing to probably say, but it's like, and it, it probably sucks to even think about, but that's how, that's how niggas be, bro. But you can ask a white person for some money, they probably give it to you. <laughs> that's the crazy part. But niggas be stingy, bro. It, it really is like that. And no one wants to put you on. That it's, That's how it is. It's, it's cold, bro. Niggas start a business, guess what? You ain't gonna get support from your niggas, bro. <laughs> you wanna, um... Get out the hood, be a rapper, bruh. Your niggas ain't no support your shit, bruh. You wanna do YouTube, bruh? You... 
some that just support that shit. You know what I mean? It, they'll say they do. Whatever. You want to fucking stream, whatever. It's the same shit. It's like... And they just don't support the shit, bro. It, it, it takes some income or something to... Or some some viewership or someone paying attention to, to really get your people to fucking click in. You know what I mean? And it, it sucks at the beginning, but it, it is what it is, bro. You have to... You, it just sucks, bro. That's it. You just gotta... I don't know. You have to embrace the suck, bro. And I, it is sucks to say that. <laughs> no diddy. Pause. All that shit. Whether it's through entertainment, through having a studio, pot, homie. My hair uh, get long, bro. Should be touching my neck. I, I, I guarantee, homie, uh, 90% of the young niggas will put the microphone, put the guns down if you put a microphone or a camera in their face. Because they're really for real. doing that for the attention. Yeah. Nigga, half the niggas will put these guns down, homie, if you put something in their hand other than a gun. Get them niggas a microphone. Show them how to make some money. Show them what to do with their camera. Nigga, buy, go find five young niggas and get four lawnmowers, two weed eaters, uh, some high visibility vests, and tell them niggas, meet me back here in 60 days, nigga. Y'all save enough money, I'll match y'all to buy a little truck, a little working truck. Show them niggas how to get an LLC started with their little click. Go get them water bars and, man, tick, go get them niggas a contract to cut some apartments, some businesses. Show them niggas how to work a buffer, buff flow. Hey, pay attention, bro. Put something in their hand, my nigga, where they ain't got to be begging. He dropping dimes, bro. <sighs> begging is a shameful thing, my nigga. I don't give a damn yeah. if you the preacher asking. That's a shameful to be asking a motherfucker for their money. And the people you asking are already poor. Hey, bro. Since he want to bring up begging real quick. I'm gonna need everybody to go ahead and hit the follow for Twitch. Go ahead, like and subscribe on YouTube. You feel me? Like, just we don't do a little eBay for a second. You feel me? Go ahead, and do that real fast. Just to take a little break for a second. But he dropping dimes, bro. That bacon that he talked about that's built different. Don't do that. But this bacon right here is that e bacon. I need a like. So do I like the video and share it with give your friends, bro? Give a reason to you. I found a reason to make him get to me, and he gonna be shaming him, man. He gonna call the police, and I'm gonna secretly call the police on y'all drug house. I'm secretly gonna call the police on y'all drug house, homie, if y'all don't hit him. He ain't doing that secretly, bro. He let everybody know. Cause nigga, that's what y'all supposed to be doing, my nigga. Y'all taking it back from us. Y'all taking money out of little nigga house from his mama. So, yeah, nigga, so uh, we got to come up with some innovative ways, homie, because just think, nigga, uh, we built Black Wall Street, nigga, without white people help. We built Rosewood, Florida, nigga, or Slocum, Texas, nigga. Atlanta was black and vibrant without white people help. Detroit, nigga, Motown was black and vibrant without white people help, nigga. Now we ain't got no more black labels. So what's your stance on that, like, selling drugs, like, to feed your family, like... That's crazy. Yeah, that's I, don't think, I don't sure. think selling drugs is bad. Nigga, white people sold that's us, so how motherfucker gonna tell us we can... If anybody should be able to sell drugs in America, it's supposed to be black people. They yeah. sold us. And we ain't getting the drugs over here. But nigga, what you doing with the money when you sell drugs? You gonna go splurge and, and look good in front of all your people, but nigga, you ain't building nothing with this money? The, the clan, nigga, they, they bought land. The clan owned farms and ranches. Uh, yeah, they bought the uh, dump way, trucks. Bro. They bought tractors. They bought cattle. Uh, they built houses. Uh, the Mexicans. Uh, the, the Puerto Ricans and Cuban, nigga, who you think own all that all them high rises and resorts out there? They come from cocaine money. Uh, the Q, everybody went and built something with the dope money except the nigga. We bought cars, clothes, snitch, jewelry, and hoes. We didn't yeah, find nobody info. in our family with the dope money and put behind the money behind the business mind. We didn't, so nah, nigga, uh, Big Meese was the last nigga that really done something with the dope money. They put some, you know, he put his family and friends and everybody, in, but, he, but he, was a, he, was, he was a unique nigga. That's why, nigga, he, he another one of my favorites. He was, and he wasn't about violence. He was a unique nigga, homie. So until we can take the money and, and put the money behind the business mind, black folk, homie, I be so disappointed all the people around me asking me for money, but ain't nobody coming with no business ideas. <laughs> nigga, I mean, I, nigga, my, nigga, I had a little broad out, nigga, I had a little broad out the strip club, homie. Uh, nigga, I put her in real estate school, but nigga, she, she couldn't, she couldn't elevate. Yeah. Uh, so nigga, I, I, I be trying to see who got the business mind, homie, so I can put the money behind the one with the business mind, not the one just asking for money to pay bills. I'm gonna go broke behind them. Yeah. But the one with that business mind, homie, yeah, that's my lifeline. So I'm looking for the one with the business mind to put the money behind. Gotcha. Now that is Charleston White, bro. He is literally like, he be dropping so many dimes to people, bro. Like, he be trying to help us, bro. He, he truly do. 
He he be going crazy for real. If you really think about what he says, if you look into what he says, bro, he it's just it's a, it's amazing information that like I didn't think about for the longest time. Like, I didn't even think about any of this stuff for like a while, and then like he started opening my eyes to some of this shit, and it's just surprising. Like the shit been sitting there the whole time, bro. But I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Charles White is a uh, he's a character that's for sure. But when he gets serious, he is so serious. He sounds so helpful, and like. If this video helped you, you know, leave a like. Let me know down below. It's not my interview. Uh, the boy, I'm guessing fam.g or something like that. That's what it was. Yeah, fam.g. That was his video. The dope video, I didn't know the whole thing was going to be an interview just with him. So that, that's great. And there's no edits. The edit outs or nothing. So that was, that was great. It was a great interview. <laughs>